Hey guys, this is my first video in a series of science videos that I'll be posting on YouTube. Um, so today I'm going to teach you guys um, some glycolysis and what it is and why it operates and some regulation of, of the pathway of glycolysis. So to just get started, here's our phospholipid bilayer and here's the extracellular environment. Um, so to begin, um, say this is your, your blood or your interstitial space and you have a glucose uh, molecule. Now what will happen is the glucose molecule will actually come through, uh, will actually go um, into the cell via a glucose transporter or glute transporter. So um, there's different uh, glute isoforms and different cell types, but I just want you guys to recognize for now that glucose enters the cell via a glute, glute transporter. And we'll get into talking about um, different types of glute transporters in another video. So once the glucose enters the cell, um, glute, uh, glucose will actually get phosphorylated by hexokinase. Uh, now hexokinase is an enzyme that's present in many different um, cell types. But what you'll come across um, in, in certain cell types is uh, a related enzyme um, called glucokinase. Now hexokinase and glucokinase are not the same enzyme, um, but um, they, they, they do perform the same function. They, they phosphorylate glucose. So um, glucokinase um, is actually found in um, pancreatic beta cells and uh, hepatocytes in the liver. Um, and there, and um, both hexokinase and glucokinase are regulated um, s um, somewhat differently. Um, one, um, one uh, the hexokinase is actually regulated, um, is actually, is actually regulated by um, it's the product of its of its uh, of its reaction, glucose six phosphate, so G G six P. Whereas glucokinase is not. Um, there's some other um, important differences as well, but we'll talk about that in another video. So, um, nevertheless, um, once the glucose does enter the cell, it does get phosphorylated by hexokinase. Um, that actually utilizes one ATP in that step, and that forms um, glucose six phosphate. Now, the whole purpose of phosphorylating glucose to glucose 6 phosphate is to actually hold um, glucose in the cell so that it doesn't actually go back out um, the glucose transporter. Um, so, um, having that um, glucose phosphorylate actually keeps and retains um, the, the, uh, the glucose for that cell so that the cell can actually use that glucose. Now, what's, in, what's interesting is that um, because glucose 6-phosphate actually inhibits hexokinase, um, the cell will only take um, the glucose that it, that it requires. It won't take any more. So once it, once it phosphorylates enough glucose um, to glucose 6-phosphate, it'll actually shut down that step and you won't actually get um, any more glucose coming in. Or if it does, it won't get phosphorylated. So it'll just go back out the cell. Anyways, um, that, so that's that one step there, um, hexokinase step, um, it, it does consume one ATP and it is a irreversible step. So um, as you can see, I have a one headed arrow there for um, indicating an irreversible step. So, um, th and this is an important um, place to mention this. But once the cell has glucose 6-phosphate, it can do a few different things with it. Um, it, can, it can run the uh, glycolysis pathway. It can um, go uh, into the pentose phosphate pathway, PPP, I'll name it. Or it can actually be diverted into glycogen synthesis. or it can be diverted into glycogen synthesis. Now, um, that'll depend on um, what the energy demands of the cell are, um, and so on and so forth. Um, so we'll get into those pathways um, in a later video, but I just wanna mention that now, that glucose 6-phosphate can actually be diverted into um, not just glycolysis, but can actually be used in glycogen synthesis or the pentose phosphate pathway. Now, um, glucose 6-phosphate, um, the next step is actually uh, isomerization step um, use, utilizing the enzyme phospholuglucose isomerase um, and that'll form fructose 6-phosphate. Um, so that is a, that is a, a reversible step. I have a two-headed arrow there indicating a reversible step. 
Um, the next step, um, so once you have fructose 6-phosphate, the next step um, is uh, the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate um, via the enzyme phosphofructokinase 1 or PFK1. And um, as you can see, um, I, you, I, I've also put that you consume one ATP in this step as well. Um, so this is another ATP consuming step. Um, this is actually a very important step in the cell. Um, PFK1 is a really highly regulated, um, really highly regulated enzyme um, because it is actually the first committed step in glycolysis pathway. Because if you think about it, um, before the step, you could actually go, you could actually go backwards. Um, fructose 6-phosphate could actually go backwards to glucose 6-phosphate and could be diverted into the pentose phosphate pathway or the glycogen synthesis. But once you get into um, phosphofructokinase 1, it won't go back. Um, it'll actually have to utilize another enzyme, but we'll get into that in another video. Um, so this, this step here is actually highly regulated. Um, now, there's a few different, um, a few different um, things in the cell that actually regulate this. Um, first, it's actually negatively regulated by um, ATP, which makes sense. Um, the cell uh, glycolysis makes ATP, um, so it actually will, it's a negative feedback um, inhibition. So it'll go back and, and actually inhibit um, phosphofructokinase 1. It's also inhibited by um, hydrogen ions. So hydrogen ions are actually made from um, lactate or lactic acid formation. And uh, we'll get into that um, in another video as well. And it's also um, negatively regulated by citrate which is a product of the um, TCA cycle. Now, we'll, and we'll also talk about that in another video. Um, so just recognize that um, ATP, um, hydrogen ions, and citrate actually negatively inhibit phosphofructokinase 1. Now, um, PFK1 is actually um, activated by um, a couple different things as well. It's actually activated by AMP. AMP. So that, that AMP is actually just... Uh, kind of an indicator that the cell is energy um, deficient. So it actually needs to run um, through the glycolysis pathway to actually regenerate some more ATP for the cell. And it's also activated by something called phos uh, or fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. So I'm just going to put F2,6-BP. Fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. Now fructose 2,6-bisphosphate um, is a very potent um, allosteric activator of PFK1. Now you may be thinking, okay, where is fructose 2,6-bisphosphate actually coming from? Well, it's actually coming from, it's actually coming from um, formation from fructose 6-phosphate as well. Um, fructose 6-phosphate will actually form um, fructose 2,6-bisphosphate. I'm just going to try to write this here. So fructose 6-phosphate um, will actually form fructose 2,6-bisphosphate by an enzyme related to PFK1, but it's actually called PFK2, so phosphofructokinase 2, PFK2. So um, we'll get into talking about that enzyme a bit more in another video, but I just wanted to tell you that... Um, fructose 6-phosphate can actually form fructose 2,6-bisphosphate via the enzyme phosphofructokinase 2. So once, you get, once the cell gets to fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, the cell will actually chop up um, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate um, into um, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate and DHAP or dihydroxyacetone phosphate via the enzyme aldolase. So aldolase will chop up fructose 1,6-bisphosphate into DHAP and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. Now again, this is a, a reversible step, so these could actually um, go back to um, form fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, but um, typically this, this reaction will just drive forward at this point. Um, so the pathway will actually um, will only go forward utilizing glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. So DHAP will actually have to be converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate um, via the enzyme triose phosphate isomerase. Once that's happened, um, glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will actually um, 
um, be converted into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate by um, GAP-DH or glycyldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase. And this actually um, garners two NADH for the cell. Um, and NADH can be used um, in the TCA um, cycle or in um, lactate production, depending on, um, depending on whether there's oxygen present for the cell. Once the cell gets 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, um, it'll be, it'll, 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate will be converted into 3-phosphoglycerate um, via the enzyme phosphoglycerate kinase. And now, as you can see, um, this is where the cell starts to actually recuperate some of its losses. It'll actually, it'll actually um, attain um, 1 ATP. It'll actually attain 1 ATP per um, 3 phosphoglycerate that it produces. But um, as, you, as you know, there'll be actually two glyceride 3-phosphates going through this reaction. So there'll actually be 2 ATP being produced. So... Um, once you get 3-phosphoglycerate, it'll be converted into 2-phosphoglycerate by a mutase reaction. Then 2-phosphoglycerate uh, will actually be converted into phosphoenopyruvate, um, or PEP, P-E-P, via the enzyme enolase. And then um, phosphoenopyruvate will actually be converted into pyruvate um, via the enzyme pyruvate kinase. And this will also get you another... Um, eight, one ATP per pyruvate formed, but since there are two, um, there are two parallel reactions proceeding, um, you'll have two phosphoenopyruvates and um, two pyruvates being formed, so you get two ATP out of it. Um, I hope that makes sense. Uh, now, pyruvate kinase is another uh, irreversible step in the reaction. And now, pyruvate kinase is also um, regulated. Um, it's, it's regulated by uh, ATP, so ATP will actually inhibit this reaction. It's inhibited by ATP, but it's activated by, but it's activated by uh, fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And now fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, as you remember, it's this, the product of the first committed step of glycolysis. So you're actually, um, once you're producing fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, you're actually activating pyru uh, pyruvate kinase. So it's a, it's a positive feed-forward mechanism in the cell. And now there are also, there are also a couple other things that inhibit um, pyruvate kinase, but it's, it's typically not, not relevant unless, it's, um, unless you're looking at cell-specific uh, mechanisms. For instance, um, in in the liver, um, glucagon will actually inhibit um, pyruvate kinase. But um, for now, uh, we don't really need to know that. That's not really uh, an important, uh, not very important right now at this step. So once you get pyruvate, once you get your two pyruvate, um, so you get two pyruvate per one glucose. Um, uh, and, and this is an also important um, point to make that um, glucose is a six carbon molecule, whereas pyruvate is a three carbon molecule. So you have two pyruvate. Um, so you have three carbon per, per, per pyruvate adding up to six for the one glucose. So um, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of good to know that to kind of keep track of your carbons as well. But um, nevertheless, once you get pyruvate, pyruvate can actually be converted into um, a couple different um, pathways depending on whether oxygen is available to the cell. One of them is um, lactate production, so lactate. We'll get into this in um, another video. Lactate, the other one is uh, the TCA cycle. So if the cell has oxygen or, uh, and, and mitochondria, uh, pyruvate will actually go to the TCA cycle. If there's no mitochondria or there's no oxygen present, then it'll go into lactate production. Um, so I just wanted to let you guys know that for now. So um, just to kind of summarize, at the end of at the end of glycolysis, we have um, we have um, you utilize two ATP um, in your like your first your first steps. They're they're kind of the energy consuming steps. You you're you're utilizing two ATP, so minus two ATP in those steps. So minus two ATP. Um, once you get past that uh, step where you kind of cut your fructose 1,6-bisphosphate 
um, into DHAP and glyceryl three phosphate, you're gonna you're now into the energy um, production um, phase of glycolysis, um, and you're gonna get two NADH, so plus two NADH. And you're going to get um, two ATP here, so there's another two, and then you're going to get two here, so there's actually plus four ATP. So you can see that you've you've kind of recuperated your loss of two ATP. Now you've actually got an additional two ATP, and you're also going to get um, two pyruvate from this at the end of glycolysis pathway. So this is kind of what you get out of all of it. So, um, so really in the end, this doesn't matter because you're actually recuperating your loss. So you actually get um, two ATP. So four minus two is two. So at the end of glycolysis, you actually get two NADH, two ATP and two pyruvate. Um, and that's what you, now the cell um, has that to use for whatever it needs to use, um, use it for. So, so I just want to tell you guys a couple quick tips on how to remember the glycolysis pathway better. I know this is a lot of information. Um, there's no easy way to remember this, um, remember some of these chemical names. Um, only, there's only, the only way to do it is by through memorization. Um, but there's a couple of quick um, things to um, help you remember um, where the steps are regulated and which steps utilize ATP and which steps are actually producing ATP. Um, so an easy way to remember which steps are regulated in glycolysis are um, the first and last steps are regulated and the PFK1 is regulated. So you just kind of have to remember that PFK, um, PFKs are regulated, are pretty highly regulated. Um, another thing to note is that um, in the energy consuming stage, um, so before, that's the kind of the phase where before you kind of cut your fructose 1,6-bisphosphate um, um, into DHAP and glyceryl 3 phosphate in that energy consuming phase, the kinases um, in like the, the, the enzymes um, with kinase in their name are actually the ones that utilize ATP. Whereas in the later steps, the kinases um, actually produce ATP. I thought that was kind of an interesting piece of information to help you guys remember. And also, um, anything with, um, so GAP DH is glyceraldehyde phosphate dehydrogenase. Dehydrogenases um, typically either um, consume or um, produce NADH. So that's a good way to try to remember which step is actually producing NADH in this reaction. So it's actually uh, GAP DH. Um, so anyways, guys, I hope that helped. Um, that was uh, glycolysis.